Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, as we get started on this new year and we are starting to look at different apps, I want to look at the couple ways that you can manage app images. Specifically, I want to show you how you can build yourself up an app image library and work with that to experiment with new applications without having to install a whole lot on your system. And really, app images are a really good way. We, we, of course, we have the snaps, we have flat packs, we have app images, which are three ways that you can run applications on your system. Now, I really like the uh, I really like the app images because they're just so easy. You can run them just as a basic user. But what if you want to install them system wide? Make sure they're on menus and things like that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a simple way that you can manage app images and you can put those system wide. Therefore, you can install them and any user will have access to those and they will be within your menu, no matter which your operating system or your desktop environment rather happens to be. So what we're gonna do is basically just look at a bash script, how you can uh, run your app images, how you can manage them, how you can keep a backup of them on your server and push them out very easily. And really this is all we are going to accomplish today. And so let's go ahead and have a look at a Linux Mint 19.3 build and talk about how we are going to do this. So here we are over on Linux Mint. And what I have here is I've went online and I have grabbed a few app images. So I grabbed Krita, I grabbed um, LibreWolf, I grabbed Olive, Ungoogled Chromium. All of these are available as app images that you can download from their respective sources. So of course you can get an app image running anywhere. You can put it on your, your user folder. So um, here's just inside your, inside your home directory, you could create a folder here for app images. In fact, it might just be good to just drop this folder over here. And then if you're the only user on your system, you can actually add these guys to the menu here in Cinnamon very easily. I didn't want to do that though, just because not everyone's going to be using Cinnamon. I'm going to show you a lot more universal way of doing this. So within our app images here, we have these app images. If I were wanted to run these as a basic user, just go ahead, download them under permissions, make sure allow executing file as program is selected. And then from there, you can just double click it and it'll run just fine. And these applications will work just fine uh, for the most part. So this, of course, is the newest version of Krita just downloaded today off of the website. So that's kind of the, the folder we're dealing with. Now, how do you actually get it so it will appear in your menu and specifically it will appear in your menu for all of your users? Well, what you need to do is you have to create a folder inside of your uh, inside of your um, uh, it's USR share applications. Now, this will require some root access. So if you do not have root access, make sure you you get there. But what I've done here is easily build a script that we can run from a single line in the terminal. We'll kind of walk through that. But first, I want to show you what we have to do. So USR share and applications. This contains these files here. These are, if you inspect them, these are actually desktop files. So uh, the desktop files are what tells the system to put them in the menu and it tells them where to put them in the menu. So you can see we have Brave installed here. Um, and you know, there's languages, here's Krita, here's our whole LibreOffice suite. And we have LibreWolf. So what these guys are, if you open these guys up with a text editor, is you basically have a desktop entry. You have the name of the application, the executed path, any comment. Do you install in the terminal? We have an icon, the application type, and then the categories will specify where it is at. So you can see this network is uh, highlighted in red. That's one of your system default categories. You can get this system at specifications.freedesktop.org slash menu dash spec slash latest slash apa.html. And these are the main categories. So if you enter one of these categories, it will highlight in red and that will tell you where it is. So you can see a few of these are sub description notes. So if you're doing audio and video, some desktops will split out audio and video into separate categories. Note that it says 
must include audio video as well. So audio video for presenting multimedia. I put, of course, uh, Krita in graphics. I put the other ones into network. And I think what we will use is we will use uh, audio, video, and video uh, as part of the tutorial here. So we're just going to go ahead and keep this guy minimized. So what I did is I created a script that's going to drop these applications into this folder. So basically I can have this repository of app images and I can keep this on my network server and no big deal. I can just move this onto the desktop or anywhere else I want it on my folder. And then what this is going to contain is you'll notice each one of these I have an app image. I have a desktop and then for most of them I will have an icon. I probably should get an icon for the ungoogled Chromium as well. Basically for this one, if I inspect this, let me right click, open it with the text editor. I'm actually just using the, uh, it just says icon equals Chromium. That will just grab the system default for whatever Chromium is. If there's no Chromium icon, I'm going to get a generic icon there. So I should probably specify that. So breaking these guys down, we have desktop entry, we have the name, this is how it's going to appear on your menu. So if I in, go into internet, ungoogled Chromium, that's how it appears in the menu. The execution path, notice that it is in slash OPT. That's actually where we're gonna put these guys. Anytime you're installing extra applications, put it in the OPT file, uh, folder. So then we have the name of the app image, which I'm just gonna come over here and copy it. Now note some of the app images I'm downloading have the A and the I capitalized. Some of them like Krita have it all lowercase. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent between the file and the desktop, uh, the desktop file here. We're not running it in the terminal and then application type and then the network being highlighted in red is what puts it into the internet section here on Linux Mint. So I've downloaded this. Now the greatest part about app images is you can actually have multiple versions of them simultaneously. If I were to update this, I can just go in here, grab the updated version, update this folder, and then run my script again. And what my script is going to do is it's going to run the, it's going to make a copy of these into the, um, the desktop icons. So I just bash app script. It's going to do uh, a sudo to make sure that we're able to write to these, uh, to these folders, which you need root access for. And then anything with a dot desktop, it's going to drop into the USR share applications and anything with the app image, it's going to drop into the OPT. And notice I did one for both ways that you will easily download it. And then I'm going to throw the, the PNG files, which are my icons. I'm going to drop those also into the OPT. And this guy here is just the, the website. So you can see what that happens to be. And so what we're going to do here is we will go ahead and add Olive to this. Of course, Olive is a, uh, this is a new um, uh, kind of a, it's a, an alpha edit, um, video editor. So here you go. You can come on into Olive and you can do all the different video editor stuff. And uh, this has the, the makings of possibly being something great. So let's just go ahead and run this guy. So what we're going to do is create a desktop file. I'm just going to call it easier. I'm just going to go ahead and just copy in one of the existing ones, paste it, and then let's go ahead and just make a new one. So we'll just call this olive.desktop. And then olive.desktop, we are going to open with text editor and then give it the name, call it olive. Now for the uh, execution path, I'm just going to copy the, the name of it there and paste that in there. Just make sure that uh, we are matching the case. So app image like that. For our icon, we are going to do opt slash olive.png. And then over here, we're not going to put this into network. We're going to put it into, I think we need to do what? Audio video. Let's just go ahead. Yep, actually that's right. <laughs> I can tell it's right because it changed it to the, the red like that. Let me just pull up, we'll pull up for example, Krita. Kind of see just making sure my icon path is correct. 
which it looks correct, hit save. And then now what we're gonna do is open up my terminal. Let me go to desktop and app images, verify everything's here. And we're just going to hit bash app script. Now, many of your desktop environments will need restarted or refreshed in order to have those show up. Let's just go ahead and double check this now. So actually it's working just fine. Now it's showing up as the name um, Olive, uh, where'd that go again? Where'd you go sign a video? Olive.desktop. If we need to, we can fix that. Um, I think what happened is it might have, um, there it is. So it's there in my menu and I didn't even have to restart anything. Let me just go ahead and pull up my desktop file again. Yeah, I got that name down there at the bottom. So uh, The system is automatically adding those on me. I did find some systems are going to add that. So hopefully let's run that bash script again and see if that fixes it. Basically, I just want it to show up correctly in the menu. There we are. Now we have it fixed. So now it just says Olive. It's in my menu. And if I we did this under my Mint 1, so let me go ahead and log out. And we will log back into my Mint 2 user, which is a basic user with no admin privileges. This guy over here, we should actually have access to olive as well so now every user on the system is going to have access to olive of course if you are running here on cinnamon you can come into here you can right click you can add it to your panel you can add it to your favorites you can do anything from there it's going to go ahead and, and create those those icons so there we have it that is how we can go ahead and manage our app images so we can be testing out new applications run app images, and quickly and easily put them into the system for all of our other users. Well, if this has been helpful for you, let me know in the comments down below, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.